Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share a fantastic new proof of our stationary Earth. This proof comes from a mechanical engineer who goes by the name David. To the best of my knowledge, David is the sole discoverer of this mathematical proof, and I'm only here to share David's information with as many people as I can. Again, my email is tabooconspiracy at gmail.com if you'd like to share your expertise or inside information. Now, David is a flat earther, but what we'll be presenting today deals mostly with proving our Earth is stationary. But discovering our Earth does not rotate at a thousand miles per hour is a necessary step for most truth seekers before they can accept flat Earth. It was for me, and the hired liars will fight against this information tooth and nail. But before we get to David's proof, I just wanted to make a quick point. For me, proving a stationary Earth is quite simple. According to mainstream science, the Earth is spinning at the equator at the supersonic rate of 1,040 miles per hour. That's about as fast as this jet appears to be flying. But this is Felix Baumgartner. According to Wikipedia, it took him two and a half hours to get up to 128,000 feet in a balloon. If the ground was spinning at 1,040 miles per hour, as claimed by mainstream science, then Felix Baumgartner should have landed over 2,000 miles away to the west over the Pacific Ocean. Instead, Felix landed 43.8 miles east of his launch site. That's the wrong direction. Do you not see how fluid dynamics work and how none of these spinning movements and effects are evident anywhere, which would be most manifest at higher elevations like at 128,000 feet? I don't know why that one is so difficult for people to understand, but thankfully we have David today to give us a new mathematical proof that cannot be denied. The information presented will have huge implications. Because if what David is saying is true, and the math most certainly supports him, then the Earth is absolutely stationary. There will be a lot of math covered, and I will certainly show you all the information I have at the end, but we're going to start with a simple summary. In this case, David agreed to make a quick audio introduction. Hey guys, my name is David, and I'm a mechanical engineer. Other than that, there isn't anything super special or noteworthy about me. I remember almost to the day that I became interested in Flat Earth, immediately following the Las Vegas shooting in October 1st, 2017, I knew something was off. Uh, this led me down a number of rabbit trails, including 9-11, JFK, the moon landing, and then the biggest lie of all. It was so much easier back then to find information and videos on all these topics before the huge crackdown of censorship recently. Uh, it was probably about six months ago that I began really pondering specifically the proposed motion of a spherical Earth, and something just didn't sit well with me. It wasn't until I put pencil to paper that I realized something rather immense. And here it is in a nutshell. Having a background in engineering and modern physics, I began breaking down the forces that would act on all masses on a ball Earth. Of course, we have the force of gravity, which we're all familiar with, but trying to think critically like a good college level word problem, was there something else, some other force or forces that I wasn't thinking of? And the answer is yes. Let's assume, and every ball earther would agree with me, that every mass on planet Earth is being pulled exactly to the center of the Earth, which would be the center of all the masses around us in essence. Now imagine any point on the ball Earth and picture that point spinning around the axis of rotation of the Earth. No matter which point you pick, with the exception of exact north or south poles, all of those points have the same path. In other words, depending on your location, you may be closer or further from the axis of rotation, but every person and every mass is going around the axis with uniform circular motion. Again, any given point is spinning in a flat circle around the axis of rotation of the Earth. This means that there has to be a centripetal force that has a tendency to fling you in the opposite direction of the axis of rotation. Not opposite the center of the Earth, but opposite the center of your own flat circular path. If we are to believe a ball Earth, then of course we know this force would be small and wouldn't overcome the force of gravity. So of course I'm not arguing we should be flying off into space, if that's what you want to call it. But as it turns out, this force is not negligible. 
This has huge ramifications because what it means is that everything on the spinning globe should be pulled, however small, to the equator. A tendency to flatten out due to the spin and gravity always pulling you to the center. Mainstream science actually acknowledges this phenomenon because they themselves say that the Earth is oblate and bulges at the equator and has less of a circular diameter pole to pole because of this. And yet, I have never once heard that masses are pulled to the equator. So to summarize, we are supposed to believe that uniform circular motion or spin of the Earth is powerful enough to smush the ball, yet we can't measure even the slightest force of pull toward the equator. Thank you guys for listening, and I just urge everyone out there to think critically and do your own research. Now, let's read David's summary on the topic. The Earth does not spin. Uniform circular motion is the motion of an object traveling at a constant, uniform speed on a circular path. When an object experiences uniform circular motion, it experiences a force known as centripetal force. Textbooks denote this by showing an acceleration vector pointed directly at the center of the circular path. The mass itself experiences this force as the tendency to push it away directly opposite to the acceleration vector pictured above. You can relate to this experience by thinking of when traveling in a car around a tight circular bend. Your body is being pushed away from the circular path by centripetal force. Consider the following diagram. Neil deGrasse Tyson is depicted here on two different circular paths. Facts. 1. If you believe in a ball earth, then you have to concede that due to the spin of the earth, the paths, highlighted in red, are the paths you would take if you were at either of those locations on the earth over a 24-hour period. The arrows pointing at the center of the Earth in pink are the force vectors of gravity pulling Mr. Tyson to the ball Earth. Three, if you believe in a ball Earth, then you believe in points one and two. Since you agree that the red highlight is your path in uniform circular motion, then, based on the laws of physics, you must concede that there exists a centripetal force, however small, pushing you away from the center of that uniform circular motion. This is shown as a pink force vector in the diagram above, directly perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the Earth. Note, the center of uniform circular motion is different than the center of gravity of the ball Earth and changes depending on your location on the ball Earth. If you are on the equator, the force vector of gravity and the vector of centripetal force are exactly opposite. Thus, the centripetal force being much smaller is effectively nullified. But what happens when you are not at the equator? Centripetal force and gravitational force are no longer opposite in direction, and that's key. Centripetal force and gravitational force are no longer opposite in direction. As depicted in the diagram, the angle of this difference is based on how far you are from the equator. Now consider the following diagram. Since the effect is mirrored on the southern hemisphere and across the axis of rotation, we can look at just one quadrant. The horizontal red centripetal forces get smaller the farther away from the equator you are because the radius of your circular motion is smaller. Black component forces show the centripetal force relative to the observer's up and horizon view. In other words, if we are spinning around a giant ball, we will have one component of centripetal force pointing directly upward from our perspective, which is effectively canceled out by the overpowering gravitational force in the opposite direction. We will also have a second component of the centripetal force always pushing us directly towards the equator. This is highlighted in the modified diagram below. Everything on the spinning ball planet, including Neil deGrasse Tyson, should be subject to the highlighted red force, the horizontal component of centripetal force due to the rotation of the Earth relative to the mass or observer, unless at the equator or either pole. I hope you're understanding the basics of David's argument. Essentially, David recognizes the mainstream science claim that if we lived on a spinning ball, that the upward centripetal force pointing through the top of your head would generally be canceled by the alleged force of gravity pulling you towards the center of the Earth if you were on the equator. But what everyone has failed to recognize is the fact that once you move away from the equator, there's another component of centripetal force that always pulls you towards the equator. This is because the centripetal force and gravitational force are no longer opposite in direction. Let's call it the equatorial pole. Look at Neil standing at the equator. 
as you can see, the centripetal force that goes straight through the top of his head is the opposite direction as the supposed pull of gravity at the bottom of his feet towards the center of the Earth. But no matter where you are on the alleged ball Earth, that centripetal force will always be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So as Neil moves away from the equator, the angle straight from the top of his head changes. But the angle of the centripetal force does not change. And that's where the globe model fails. This equatorial pull would be most prominent on the 45th parallel. If you were in the northern hemisphere along the 45th parallel and were facing south, then your whole body would want to lean forwards towards the equator. If you were facing north, then you would feel the tendency of leaning backwards. This amount wouldn't be negligible. For a 200 pound person on the 45th parallel, this centripetal force would amount to the weight of a normal sized tomato always wanting to head towards the equator. Obviously, everyone would feel this all the time. Field goal kickers would always want to kick their field goals facing the equator. Runners would always want to run towards the equator, etc. But you can set aside all feelings because this effect would be measurable all of the time by gyroscopes, by advanced scales, by accelerometers, and all military units whatsoever would absolutely know of this equatorial pull and this force has never been measured. Because this force does not exist, the Earth is stationary. David even created an Excel spreadsheet. For example, a person at 200 pounds on the 45th parallel would be pulled laterally towards the equator at a force equal to 0.35 pounds. 0.35 pounds is greater than the average weight of a tomato. Imagine this tomato weight always wanting to pull you towards the south wherever you go. You can't tell me that you wouldn't feel that. A 300 pound person would experience half a pound always pulling towards the equator. An object at 1,000 pounds at the 45th parallel would always have a force pulling it towards the south at nearly two pounds. How quickly would a projectile or a 20,000 pound aircraft be taken off course? This is what David told me via email. As I acknowledge in the original PDF, it is certainly a small force compared to the force of gravity, but this imaginary force would have to be accounted for in almost any imaginable scenario. We're talking about a lateral force on the order of 0.35 over 100, the magnitude of gravitational force. So yeah, it's small, but would have to be there if the Earth is spinning. And it would always be on, just like gravity always pulls us onto the ground. It would be a constant push always towards the equator. Cars going north would always have to use slightly more horsepower than south if in the northern hemisphere. An Olympic runner would get a slightly faster time running south and north, etc. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to share each page of David's white paper. Pause the video on each page as you need to because it would take me a long time to read all six pages. I want to thank David, the mechanical engineer, for coming forward and sharing more evidence that proves we've been lied to big time about the Earth. And that's the first step on our quest to end this tyranny that enslaves us all. If you'd like to hear more from David, I hope you stay tuned to Globusters on Sunday or Journalism Raw on Monday because David has expressed interest in sharing more information live. I hope he does. We don't have much time left to wake people up to our dire situation. May God bless you in the pursuit of and sharing the truth. Thank you.